count. So now I've got room above it. So I could say these are the words. I'm just typing in words. Notice it's formulated in the formula bar. If I want to move to the right, I could click over here and I can also hit tab. So I'm going to hit tab and that moves it to the right. And then here I'm going to, I'm going to say, well, let's say word count. Let's say word, I'm going to double, I'm going to double click on here, count and put count. And then over here, I'm going to put words. All right, now on these two, notice this cell is longer than, than uh, what I have room for. And I was still able to overwrite it on this cell. But I could try to make this cell longer. I could put my cursor in between A and B and extend the cell like that. My, my other methods that I might use here is I might say, maybe I want to wrap the text. Home tab, I can go to, uh, let's select these two, home tab. Let's go to uh, the alignment group and then wrap the text. So what that does is it automatically wraps the text. We've got to be careful of that because it also makes this wide cell if there was anything to the right of it. But in this case, I'm okay with that. I also want to center the text. Home tab, alignment, centering the text. So now that uh, that's not the one I wanted. Let's keep it there. Center is this one. <laughs> center the text. Now, because this is a header, you also might format the header uh, with a different color or something like that. But in our case, and you might make it bold to make it a header, home tab, font group, bold. Now, the next thing I would like to do with this data set is sort it by the most used to the least used. So this is basically an alphabetical order. I want to sort it this way. So one way we can do that is I could, so I could select all this information and then go to the data tab and I can add a filter, sort and filter, add in the filter. And that puts us these little filters up top. So now I can sort the data. Now that works, but it's not my favorite way of doing it because I kind of, I, I feel like I might lose, I, I would rather have it in a table usually. So what I will do is I'll turn off the filters and instead I'm going to select the data. Now note, when I make a table, I could add the whole data set like this and then go to the insert tab and I'm just going to put a table around it. Or because there's no blank cells in this, there's no blank cells that are all populated and the first two are, are boldened. So Excel can note that those, that's probably a header. Then I can go to insert and table with just one cell highlighted, just one and say, insert the table. And it puts the, what they call the dancing ants. The Excel is fun guy calls them like dancing ants around it. Right? And uh, that really, they're more like marching ants. They can get a little groove on. If you put a microphone, uh, like, a, like, like if you looked in real close, you can see they were actually dancing and not just marching. They got a lot more going on, but we can't see it because we're out. But in any case, then uh, you can see that we have the table range, which is, don't worry about the dollar signs right now, but A1 to B21. That's the range of the data, A1, the cell, to this range of B21 is the range of the data. So we're going to say that looks good. We can also just see it visually, insert the, the, the table. So now we have our table. Now note on A, I can make A a little skinnier again, and it'll, it'll still wrap the text. All right, so now we've got these filters that drop down. So what I'd like to see is, is the filter by the word count. So I'm going to filter it by the word count hitting this drop down i want to go from a to z this isn't alphabetical order it's going to go but it's going to go from uh that'll take it the other way showing the smallest to the highest right and then if i if i flip that and go from z to a now i've got the largest which is probably the most important on top so if i was going to sort this data this is the first thing we'd probably do right we'd say okay here's all the words which uses which word is used most the lord well, that might tell us something about the thing. Maybe it's clearly going to be a, 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 a play about, about uh, you know, lords, <laughs> right? A lot, a lot of highbrow people in it or something, you know, you would, you would expect and so on. And so that gives us a little bit of a representation of the data. Now, if I wanted to visualize this data, we can do just the standard bar chart, which is generally fairly easy to put in place. I can select all of this. And we can say uh, insert. And then if I go to the charts, note the recommended chart. Sometimes it's a useful thing to look at 
because it gives you some different representations that you might be not be as familiar with that gives you some good ideas of different ways to format the data. So I'm visualizing the standard bar chart. But of course, you could flip the axes on it and represent it, uh, represent, represent it this way. Uh, or you could, you could see it this way and, you know, different kind of representations. But I, I, there could be a problem with this bar chart. So let's take a look at it. If I insert a bar chart just like this, notice there's an issue with it because, you know, obviously nothing's being represented here, right? Now, one of the th we could try to adjust the bar chart from here, but one of the things that'll uh, make it easier to automatically put the bar chart in is to switch the order here. So I'd like the words on the left hand side, and then uh, and then the word count. Let's call it word, not words count, word count on the right hand side, because that usually then Excel will pick up the uh, x axis for the items that are on the left. So let's try to move that over. Now there's a couple ways we can move it. We could try to insert a column on the left and move it, but the easiest way to do that is to actually select the entire column we want to move. So I've got my cursor on B, I've got that arrow drop down. I select the entire thing. And then the key is that you have to hold down the shift and then you put your cursor on the, on the in-between spot. So you get those four arrows, hold down the left click. We're gonna click and drag now and drag it to the right and then let go. So now we've got the words on the right, the word count on the left. And so now we should be able to uh, insert our table. Also note that when you insert the table, you could select simply the data down below. Uh, if you pick up the, the headers, uh, Excel should really generally recognize that, that that is the header. So I could pick up the entire thing with the headers uh, like so. And then we can go into the insert tab up top. Once again, we go into our charts and we're looking for the standard uh, bar chart here. We have different variations, these being basically the same kind of chart, right? So I can look at it this way, this way. We've got our more uh, uh, 3D kind of bar charts and so on. And then we have the axis is turned the other way uh, with our bar charts. But let's just do the standard bar chart. So there we have it. I'm going to pull this. I'm going to put my cursor on that left part of it, pull it to the left, and then notice it put it put up top word count. Now that might not be exactly the title we want. So I could click on this and say this is going to be, let's say I'm going to go into it and say this is uh, Hamlet word count, right? So then we've got our title up top. I can make it a little bit larger. And it, it in essence, it does everything that we basically want it to do. Uh, to, to make our chart by just basically implementing it there. So, so, which is nice. So now we've got this pictorial representation. Now, I just want to point out that this is not exactly a histogram, but it's given us uh, a, similar, a similar kind of thing. So if I go to the uh, insert, notice that we have up top these items, insert a column or bar chart versus this one, which is to insert a, a, a statistic chart. So if I hit the drop down, we have a histogram here. So the histograms we'll look at later, which are which looks similar in terms of a representation. And and the, the difference is that we have these buckets within the histograms because we're usually looking at uh, an X axis that has numerical data within it. But we can actually create we can actually format the data to use a similar kind of bar chart. So we'll look at kind of histograms later, but we want to keep those two things separate in our mind. But the concept is similar here. We're saying, hey, look, this data on the left is is giving us useful information in a lot of ways, but uh, it's not useful unless it's organized. It's great here that we can organize it from top to bottom and I can see the words that are used the most. But of course, the pictorial representation is going to give us uh, even more more data. So if I just look at this pictorial representation, it's probably going to more easily show us exactly what's going on uh, and more clearly show it, be it easier to display to other people and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you if